What's up everybody? It's Danny Gould with the Gould team selling Silicon Valley. The topic of today's video is how I made my first $100,000 as a real estate salesperson within the first 12 months of me starting in the industry from scratch. No parents, no relatives, no nothing, just me, myself, and I. So this all started about three and a half years ago now, right when I graduated from Stanford. And at the time, I had just graduated with my degree in biology, had a uh, musical theater background, was thinking about doing that full time, but the actor's lifestyle just didn't really appeal to me. And so I left school after five years. I took a victory lap, that's what they call it, you know, take an extra year to finish. And at the end of all that, I basically decided that I was going to go back to my old high school and teach biology for a summer. So while I was doing that, I came across a little for sale sign. And that for sale sign was for a two and a half million dollar home in and around my neighborhood. It was listed by a family friend of mine who I have grown very close to. If you guys watch the vlogs, that's Scott and Diane. So Scott and Diane kind of ushered me into the business. They were like, Danny, you would be perfect for this job. You'd, you'd absolutely kill it. And so I was just like, all right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go for it. And I pretty much signed up to take my real estate exam right away. Of course, being in the state of California and like most government bureaucracies, the process took way longer than it should have. But uh, wait, did I say government bureaucracies? But like most government processes, things took way longer than they should. So the entire process took about six months. But in December of 2014, I became a full time realtor or real estate salesperson at or in the state of California. And when I got into it, I had a huge, I mean, just like a huge ego. I thought that I was going to be the best and that it was going to take me, you know, six months and that I was going to be a millionaire. Literally. That's literally what I thought. I, I told myself I'm going to be a millionaire by the end of the year. I was wrong, but I was still able to make six figures my very first year in real estate. But you know, it wasn't all fun and games. In fact, the first three years, I mean, th the first three months, I had no sales at all, like z literally zero sales. And I, I felt like I was spinning around in circles and wasn't like really going anywhere. I just kind of kept thinking to myself, like, how does anybody even like make it as a real estate agent? Because I'm doing everything that they were telling me to do. I was cold calling. I was uh, knocking on doors. I was, I, mean, I was doing all the things, all the traditional things that everyone says to do and things that I still do to this day, but I'm just executing on now at a much higher level than I was back then. And so basically at the end of the three months, I get a phone call from a lady and her name was Lynn and she is a super, super top producer at my office and top 1% at Intero, the brokerage that I work for, which is one of the largest brokerages in the United States and number one in Silicon Valley. So you can imagine being top 1% at Intero is basically like being a real estate badass, right? You're making well over a million dollars a year. So Lynn calls me up and she says, hey, you know, uh, Robert, who's my manager, said that you would be a good candidate for a buyer's agent. Would you like to be a buyer's agent? And I, I, I remember sitting there, like, I remember just kind of like standing there door knocking. I was in the middle of my door knocking and I just kind of, you know, sat there for a moment. I said, you know what, why don't we talk about this more on, I think it was like Sunday or something like that. Cause it was like a Saturday or tomorrow, you know, like, let's talk about this more tomorrow. Um, I would love to chat with you more about it. I want to find out what you have in mind. Uh, but the truth is, is that I really wasn't sold and I really didn't think that I wanted to do it. And the reason is, is because when I got into real estate, I told myself that I wanted to be my own boss, that I wanted to be able to make my own decisions, uh, live by my own rules and ultimately build the number one real estate team in America. 
those have been my goals since the very beginning. And I thought, man, I feel like I'm going backwards. I'm getting into real estate and now I'm gonna be on a team and I'm basically gonna be working for this other agent. Like, I don't wanna do that. You know, I, I really just wanna be like my own guy. I wanna run the show. But for whatever reason, mostly because I was dead ass broke and I had no sales under my belt, I went to that meeting and we talked about it and what she proposed was a very, very generous offer. Uh, basically, she was gonna give me all the leads that she couldn't handle, primarily from Zillow and Trulia, which if anybody knows what those are, and I'm sure that most people have heard of Zillow and Trulia, but the way that they make their money is they sell ad space to real estate agents and then real estate agents essentially get put up on certain zip codes for paying uh, to be featured in those zip codes. And then they receive leads when prospects actually inquire about a certain property. Whoever it shows up on the right-hand side of the screen gets the lead. So it's a really expensive lead generation platform. It's not cheap. So she was basically giving me two to $3,000 of leads per month for free. Uh, I didn't have to pay her anything, only on closing. And so I, w I jumped at the opportunity because I, it meant that I could still be my own guy. She, I, she didn't, you know, of course it was, a, it was also great to be able to put on, on my resume or my signature that I was on her team because, I mean, she, was a, she is and continues to be like a super, super heavy hitter. And so I just jumped at the opportunity to, um, I just jumped at the opportunity to work with her. And so from that time until the end of the year, so this was like March, from March until December, I made well over $100,000. In fact, in gross commissions, I made close to $200,000. And I attribute a lot of the success that I had in the latter stages of that year to a lot of the work that I'd put in at the beginning of the year. Because even though, I wanna take you guys back to when I was saying like I was doing all the things that they told me to do, but I didn't, like I wasn't getting the results. The truth is, is like almost in any career, you don't see the results right away. I mean, the work that you put in today are, you know, is the fruit that you, you know, the, the, it's the, it's the, you know, the seeds you plant today bears the fruit you eat tomorrow. That's the phrase I'm looking for. So the seeds that I was planting had finally started coming to fruition, mostly in the, mostly in the space of me knowing what to say and how to say it. Because let's face it, like any 22 year old at the time, I mean, I looked like a baby. I, I, Dusty, like, you know, flash a picture right here of me. I look like a kid, you know, I still do. Uh, I still get that all the time. They're like, how old are you, 10? And I'm just like, haha, that's funny. But it was just, you know, completely mind boggling to me how some people could just go out there and wing it, you know, because about the first or the second listing appointment that I went on, which was January of that year, after all my cold calling and stuff, I went in and I was just like, I had no idea what I was doing, you know? And at that point I was just like, whoa, I kind of like need to understand what I'm like, I need to like kind of fine tune this. And so I, at, went along and I like memorized all the scripts and then I came across one very powerful online lead generation script that was able to really convert a high percentage of those Zillow leads, almost 10%. Uh, the average, I think the industry average is like four for online leads. So I was converting over double what most real estate agents were able to do into closed sales, uh, just purely based off of what I was able to say over the phone. And then once I get them, once you get them into the office, it's completely different. But one story that I really wanted to share was the very first sale that I ever made as an agent, which was for $1.25 million, and which translates into roughly $35,000 in gross commissions. Um, so an amazing paycheck for like my first paycheck, but it was an online lead, it was, super, super uh, late when I got the lead. Like, I think it was like six or seven and, and at night when I got the lead, I called them and she says, hey, look, you know, I know this is a big ask, but our home, the home that we're selling is literally in escrow right now. 
and our agent has tried and tried and tried and we've missed out on several homes already and we just need somebody that knows how to get it done. Can you help us? And I said, yeah, absolutely. You know, I have availability tomorrow at like 6 p.m. And she's like, no, no, no. Like we want to make an offer on this house and the offers are due tomorrow. Can you come tonight? And I was just like, oh yeah, absolutely. Like I can be there in 20 minutes. And she's like, no, my husband has night school and he doesn't get home until 10 p.m. So I was just like, well, then I guess I'll be there at 10, 15. <laughs> like, you know, I was, I was eager to do it. So I got there, I got to the house. We spent like two hours chatting. And I just remember like coming home that night. Um, by the way, the house that they wanted to make an offer on, we didn't make an offer on it because after meeting with them and conversing with them, I realized that that's not what they really wanted, you know, and I told them, and this has always been my motto, I always tell my clients, I said, don't make an offer on a home unless you absolutely love the home. Otherwise, you know, life's too short to settle. And what they were doing was that they were settling. And I said, you know what, forget this. I said, just trust me, I will find you what you want. And literally within a week, I found them an off market property in the neighborhood that they wanted, in the price range that they wanted, and most importantly, with the schools for the children that they wanted. I was ecstatic. I, I couldn't have been happier. And I know for sure that I earned that check, you know, but I think that a lot of times, you know, people get into real estate, they think it's going to be easy. They think it's going to be this and that. And the truth is, is that I still to this day put in, you know, 70 to 80 hours per week selling real estate. You know, with my video and my YouTube, I, I do devote some hours to that. Uh, which has taken away a little bit from the salesmanship, the sales, the sales side of things. But the truth is, is that now I have an, a full time, you know, pretty much a full time assistant in Stephanie. I have a, a videographer slash marketing director in Dusty who does all my video for me, plus a buyer's agent that's able to do a lot of the, the showings and everything in Bellman. So now that I'm more leveraged, I have a little bit more time. But when I got into it, you know, I was a learning my craft, you know, which is definitely the first rule when you're getting into any business or any sales job. It's like you need to learn your craft, you need to learn your scripts, and you need to know it better than everybody else, especially if you're in your 20s. Like, you cannot give anybody an excuse to doubt you for one fucking second because the second that you like stumble and mm, 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 is the second that you lose all your credibility. Because when you're old, people just be like, oh, don't worry about it, he's old, but he has gray hair, so clearly he knows what he's talking about, even if he hasn't even done it for like five months. But a young person like me, if I stumble, well, I can't blame it on age, obviously. So they just chalk it up to inexperience. So know your scripts, learn your craft, and most importantly, just know it to the point where you're just 100% confident in everything that you say. And don't sell things that you don't believe in because that's fucking stupid. Like when I sit down with a buyer or a seller, it's like I'm selling, well, when I, when I talk to a buyer, I'm just like, don't buy a house unless you absolutely love it. And that's because I'm not here to sell you what you don't want. I don't want you to live a life full of regret. So either step up and get what you want or don't buy a house at all, period. And then, of course, with the seller, I'm ultimately selling myself and my ability to market and negotiate for them the highest possible price for their home. And at this point, I'm skilled enough to know that when I sit down with the seller, I'm the best agent for the job, period. I don't care who, I don't care if the top agent in America and, or one of the top agents in America is sitting, you know, is coming in right next, right after me. I can literally just dance circles around him. But anyways... It's a little cockiness getting in the way, but anyways, guys, so you just have to, you have to learn your craft and, and, and definitely, you know, latch on to a more experienced person of the 12 transactions, no 11 transactions that I did my first year, eight of those can be attributed to the relationship that I built with, with Lynn, uh, the agent that I was talking about. Um, the other two, oh, sorry. Sorry, no, seven of those can be attributed to Lynn. Two of those can be con contributed to Scott and Diane and their partner, Bonnie. So two of those were referrals from them. And then two more 
were deals that I actually got on my own. But think about that. You know, I literally took experienced, a experienced agents and gave them something that they didn't have, which was time. I filled the void for them. And in result, you know, they got something, which was a referral fee. And I got something, which was clients, which I needed. So it was a total win-win. And then more than anything, I, because of my relationship with them, I was able to, to learn and to grow from the knowledge that I took from them. And I think this really rolls in to the last point, you know, that I, you know, I think this really ties in to the last point that I really wanted to make, which was do not under any circumstance, allow your ego to get in the way of getting to where you want to be because I swear, like my first two months, like I thought I could do it all on my own. I literally thought I didn't need a mentor. I didn't think that I needed a coach. I didn't think that I needed um, any, I didn't think that I wanted to be a, on a, a part of a team, you know? And it was just mind boggling to me that, it's now mind boggling to me rather, that I had that ideology for even a second because the second that I took on that extra responsibility from Lynn was the second that I began to grow as an agent. Because at the end of the day, you know, if I'd let my ego get in the way and I'd said, no, I don't want to be on a team, I literally would have been broke after my first year. Like, dead ass broke. But instead, six months into my real estate career, I had enough saved up to go ahead and buy a BMW, you know, which was like my dream car. I had built that dream car like when I was studying for my license and then in six months after getting my license to be able to actually drive that thing off the lot, which was like a dream come true, you know? And so do not under any circumstance allow your ego to get in the way. Obviously after my first year, you know, I went, Lynn and I went our separate ways completely cordially. We still like do business and deals together all the time. We just co-listed a property together a couple months ago, but, um, we both, we both benefited from that relationship. And so don't think that, you know, don't, don't allow your long-term goals to inhibit or do not sacrifice your short-term gain for long-term goals if you can still get to those goals and you know, ben reap the benefits of, of the short term in the interim. I, I, all this rambling, like there's just a lot of like random tidbits here, but at the end of the day, just don't be afraid to get coached. Don't be afraid to get mentorship uh, because the more good influences you have in your life and the more business opportunities that you can get, get involved with early, likely the faster you're going to get to where you want to be, especially when it comes to sales. You know, um, it's really hard to build a book of business or build a referral business if you don't have any clients. So latch on, I mean, like literally there are people out there, all, there are top, top, um, producers, I'm sure in every single uh, field that are more than willing to help you out and need help themselves. You know, it, it's a two way street. They need help and you need help. So, Anyways, guys, those are really, you know, that's really all I have to say, I have to say about that. You know, my background change. In other words, I had to change the battery out and then, you know, things got messed up. I was so close. I was like literally this close to finishing. But anyways, I think at the, at the end of the day, guys, the, the message that I really just want to drive home is, you know, don't think that for a second that you're not going to be able that you are not going to work your ass off. Like work as, as hard and as much as you can learn your shit. And then secondly, just do not be afraid, you know, to latch on to somebody else that has more experience than you and reap the benefit of that relationship. You know, whether it be from the business perspective or from the knowledge perspective, you know, both help. And lastly, you know, don't let your ego get in the way of getting to where you want to be. Um, I think that this is definitely the most important lesson that I learned in the very first year of being in real estate. After just letting my ego go and realizing that I had so much to learn and so far to grow to get to where I wanted to be, that I could allow myself 
to be mentored and coached by many people, not just Lynn, not just Scott, but actually going out and paying for coaching and everything else. I mean, these are things that in the long run have so uh, have just, in my opinion, just an infinite ROI because you never know where your growth is going to lead you and that growth can stem from just simple relationships that if your, if your ego had not allowed you to uh, take on, you never would get there. So that's definitely by far the biggest lesson. Anyways, that's all I have for you guys. If you have any questions at all, any comments, go ahead and leave it down in the comment box and I'll be sure to get back to you guys. Um, if you aren't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. We have daily vlogs on this channel as well where you get to see me and my team and what it's like to live as a real estate agent here in Silicon Valley. It's a lot of fun and there's a lot of boba involved. So there's that. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, you know who it is, Danny Gould with the Gould Team, the future number one real estate team in America. We're selling Silicon Valley one dream at a time. Catch you guys in the next video.